hello students so today we shall be discussing on unit 4 which speaks about learner centered and learning center concepts and characteristics and we'll try to understand them with certain examples now first what are the different approaches of learning teaching learning takes place with the use of certain approaches which make teaching and learning more effective and more interesting an approach to teach a subject is a description of how teacher goes about teaching students it includes the various activities which are planned by the teacher and transitional ways or strategies that are employed by the teacher and also how the teacher deals with the situations students during the teaching and learning process in a classroom situation now this first explanation suggest that teacher is important teaching is taking place and here the employment of any approach the context which plays a major role by context i mean the time place socio economic context of the learner and the teacher the learner's previous knowledge and previous experiences all these is collectively known as the context which is playing major role in the learning and in deciding the approach for learning now my next point is let us consider a situation as i suggested in the beginning we shall be discussing this approach with certain examples we'll try to understand difference between learner centered approach and learning centered approach so i'll posing a situation before you where mr binaya takes a class he narrates explains different concepts and ideas he asks questions to the selected few students all his efforts are focused on finishing the course in time therefore he finds very little time to take care of the needs and interest of the learners rather he is worried about his teaching the students are observed to be passive listeners in the classroom situation and sometimes some of them ask few questions which mr binaya tries to maintain discipline in the class so that he can go uninterrupted in his teaching his efforts for making his class interesting to the class to the situation to the context are limited as he constrained by time at the end of teaching the lessons he asks two or the three questions for evaluating today's learning how today my lesson went where i went successful where i couldn't went that successful which was expected and towards the end he asks certain questions where students are less interested in what the teacher is doing in the classroom situation now this is situation first let us analyze another situation situation 2 where miss samita is taking a science class at the elementary level she is not reading the text dividing the whole class into five or six groups asking students to bring a plant and observe it in each group encouraging them to discuss about the plant in details in their group she is facilitating the group discussion and encouraging participation of each student giving opportunities to each student to explore and to utilize his or her experiences asking each student to draw and label the picture of a plant in their notebook asking each student to share their work and promoting discussions among learners in this situation miss samita is facilitator then a traditional teacher and demonstrated different roles and play now these two situations we have just discussed now here i would help you understand 
in situation 1 which is a situation of teacher centered approach being employed where teacher is concerned worried about the timeline about the content being finished and in the second situation where Ms. Smita is teaching she is clearly elaborating the use of learner centered approach first was an example of teacher centered second is an example where learner centered in the first situation teacher was important and teacher was planning teacher was trying to save time teacher was presenting the content in second situation teacher was presenting a situation allowing the students to explore the situation allowing them to enrich their experiences and gradually understand the concept so second situation is a situation which is learner centered situation now modern psychology constructivist learning theories suggest that all approaches we are teaching we are dealing in a classroom situation should be learner centered learner is at the center of all activities the teacher plays the role of facilitator where he or she is trying to help the learning process and organizing it to match the learning situations and to match the learner's condition teacher's responsibility is to stimulate curiosity and independent thinking develop problem solving skills promote planning and its execution supporting and suggesting themes for projects developing self-learning innovative acquisitions techniques knowledge through observation of phenomena creative thinking activities all this is suggested by national curriculum for elementary and secondary education 1987 this is referred there on page 6 as we know that learner brings with him or her his or her previous knowledge his or her previous experiences which influence classroom learning process in the learner centered approach focus is given on the developmental stage maturity of learning strategies prior knowledge prior experiences interest social context and culture of the learner as a teacher for implementation of learner centered approach one must understand the learner and their learning styles and this is strength of constructivist approach where we are trying to understand the learner and to understand learning styles of the learner it is essential that we we know in detail the characteristics of each and every learner even in my class though it is a set of class 40 students are sitting there but still this set of class is a group of individuals they look alike they are of same age they are of same class they are studying same context same content but at the same time they have different learning styles at the same time each one have different potential different interest in the subject matter being discussed now how to understand the learner in order to adopt the learning centered approaches we have to understand different aspects of a student of a learner for example we need to understand health and physical development of the learner health and physical potential of the learner mental abilities his or her personality learning styles what are the motivations for which he or she is trying to learn and what is their home and cultural background so all these points help us understand a learner holistically starting from physical and mental health mental abilities as an individual as a person what is the personality of the individual what are different learning styles which help him or her to acquire new knowledge what motivates them 
to learn it is it their own interest or examination system or parental expectations and at the end of this we need to understand with which home and cultural background he or she comes he or she belongs now role of teacher in this learner centered approach if we say learner centered approach so prime is learner but at the same time since teacher is inevitable important aspect of the class so we need to understand teacher's role in learner centered approach in the learner centered approach we consider few assumptions one pupils have different learning styles that instruction should accommodate so whenever we are instructing students we should not be giving uniform instruction we should not be giving blanket statements we should be identifying their different learning styles and trying to address each learning style in the classroom situation children's innate curiosity and self perpetuating exploratory behavior that should form the basis for their learning in the classroom situation that means they should have an opportunity to pursue their interest as deeply as long as they find the pursuit satisfying individual child should learn in unpredictable way all individuals all children in my class they learn in unpredictable way sometimes instructions help them sometimes their own motivation and this should be accommodated these eventualities should be accommodated in designing learning environment of my class children are capable of making intelligent decision in significant areas of their own learning the function of school is to help children develop learning to learn in order to becoming life long learners where the learning is coming to them not for the temporary phase not for a, to qualify a class not for qualifying next examination but it should be their part of their life long enriching experiences which are helping them deciding future course of their life now how learning is facilitated by relationship of openness trust and mutual respect how school should provide an accepting and warm emotional climate the learner centered approach as a teacher you have the following three critical roles to play one observer is and diagnostician of learner so observer and try to diagnose the learner's potential learner's strength learner's weakness here you must constantly watch the behavior and the activities of the learner in and out of the classroom so as to estimate the diagnostic strength weakness and learning needs how learning dispositions in a classroom situation this would help you in shaping and providing appropriate learning environment and learning activities for the learner provide the environment for the learning support develop an environment which is learner friendly which is helping the learner once you diagnose the various learning needs of your learner it becomes your primary responsibility to plan a learning environment that is conducive for each learner where each learner find enough scope and opportunity to fulfill his or her needs which we have diagnosed it in the first phase here in the second phase we are trying to provide a healthy learning environment the classroom situation third point facilitator of learning so what is the role of a teacher in a classroom situation teacher is a facilitator of learning you always need to look out for occasions to help the learner while they are engaged in learning this is more challenging than direct teaching direct teaching is something where i am giving a lecture where i am leading the class 
But in this situation, I am not a leader. I am a facilitator. I am facilitating the process of learning. After identifying their, after diagnosing their situation, their learning styles, I try to provide an environment for learning and here I am facilitating the learning situation. You always need to look out for occasions to help learner while they are engaged in learning. I am saying we should try to look out for the occasion to help a learner. We are not supposed to impose ourselves. We should restrain ourselves from the active classroom environment and let the learner be active participant in the learning process. This is more challenging than the directly teaching as I suggested. We all know that each learner has a distinct learning style. His or her own these variations in learning dispositions. We have to provide support at the appropriate situation during their period of learning. Further, you need to encourage the learner to be engaged in learning activities. Whatever you find them remaining inactive. If you find somebody is getting inactive in a classroom situation, try to seek their attention. Try to have them with you mentally, emotionally and then help them becoming an active part of a classroom situation. Now, learning centered approach. The first was learner centered approach. Now, I will be discussing learning centered approach. Learning centered education focus on the learning process. All those involved in the education of students such as teachers are also co-learners with the students in the learning centered education. It is basically learner centered but it also include teacher in the process of learning in a classroom situation or whatever situation we are adapting to. Researches have shown that a learning centered education helps students acquire competency in skill areas and creating lifelong learning experiences. For example, when you take your students out on a field, you are taking them for a trip to a new place like a dam or a factory. The students not only learn a great deal from the observation and interaction with the technical experts, workers, peers and other people available on the situation, but also learn several aspects of construction, operation and utility of the organization which you can further use in developing your understanding and that of your students through mutual discussions. So a mutual discussion between you and your students always supplement the observation. So observation is one thing where I observe thing but post observation situation where I sit with my learner mutually discuss what have we observed, what aspect of the organization, the dam or the field uh, factory or the industry we have visited, what aspect of that I have understood. And during the process of discussion, two-way traffic, we always enrich those learning experiences of the learner. Learning centered education place the student at the center of education. It begins with the understanding the educational context from which a student comes. It continues with the teacher evaluating the student's progress towards learning objectives. By helping the students to acquire the basic skills to learn, it ultimately provides a basic for learning throughout life. It is therefore there are places the responsibility for learning on the student. So this method places the responsibility for learning on student while the teacher assumes the responsibility for facilitating this learning, this education. This approach strives to be individualistic, flexible, competency based, varied in the methodology and not always constrained by time 
or by the place. So that is important to understand here. Keep it in mind. The teacher attempts to maximize students' productivity, knowledge, their styles of acquisition, the knowledge, and increasing their skills and developing the person and as their professional competencies and abilities. The teacher may hence use a variety of instructional tools and methods as well as flexible arrangements of time and place. Learning assume primary responsibility for their choices and have opportunities to exercise control over their learning. As a result, there are collaborative partnerships taking place among all those who are the stakeholders of children's learning, be it parents, be it teachers. Now, what are the educational practices for this? Collaborative group learning both inside and outside the classroom. Individual student inquiry and discovery is helping it. This can be taken as an example of another educational practice. Inquiry and discovery by students and teachers together where both are working as partners. Where learning is mutually beneficiary exercise activity. Where teacher is learning and student is also learning. And both are complementing to each other's experiences, each other's observations. This style is problem solving inquiry learning. This motivates problem solving inquiry learning. It synchronizes interactive distance learning, hands on experiential learning activities, on site field experiences, and self paced performance on contextual tasks. Now, what are the characteristics? of the learner-centered education. The major characteristics are as follows. Number one, students construct knowledge through gathering and synthesizing information and interacting with the general skills of inquiry, communication, critical thinking, problem solving and so on. Emphasis is on using communicating knowledge effectively to address enduring and emerging issues and problems in real life context. The teacher's role is to coach, is to facilitate. The teacher and students evaluate learning together. It is not that teacher is evaluating learning. It is a joint process where learner as well as teacher both are evaluating the process of learning. Teacher and assessing and interwoven. The teaching which is happening there is assessing and interwoven with the content and with the learner. Assessment is used to promote a diagnose learning. So objective of assessment is not deciding on the promotion of the learner but it is the nature of the assessment is to promote and to diagnose the learning process, learning problems, learning issues. Emphasis is on generating better questions and learning from errors. Desired learning is assessed directly through papers, projects, performances and portfolios. Approach is a compatible with interdisciplinary investigations. Culture is cooperative and supportive. Teacher and student learn together, they both are moving together. So this is about the lesson concepts and characteristics of learner-centered and learning-centered approaches and we try to understand it with two examples where we had first story of Mr. Binet and second story from Ms. Smita. Teacher-centered approach is in the mind of teacher, time constraint, curriculum constraint. Learner centered, learner is primary responsibility and teacher is a facilitator there. With the example of learning centered approach where teacher and student both are complementing each other's learning exercise, learning process and helping each other to enrich the content. So this is about the learner centered approach and learning centered approach. This is up for the day. We'll meet again with the next chapter on the same series of 
कोलेबरेटिव लर्निंग कंस्ट्रक्टिव लर्निंग थैंक यू बाय